If you wanted all cooling performance of this ridiculous cooler, but none of the awkwardness of having it on, well, keep watching. Hey guys, it's fair to say that 52 Pi holds the crown when it comes to having the most cool cooling solution for Raspberry Pi and this is Ice Cooling Tower and this thing, well, it's tried to solve the problem not many of you or me actually thought we are having. But if you want all the performance of that cooler, but none of the awkward uh, looks and questions that everyone in the community is gonna ask you, like what you're compensating for, then there is a new solution from 52Pi and it's called Ultra Thin Ice Cooling Tower. Honestly guys, this is not how you do ultra thin, but it is ultra thin comparable and in this video I'm going to check it out and figure out is it any better, because it's definitely smaller. So what exactly that 15-ish dollars gets you? Now inside the box you'll find obviously the cooling solution which is a heatsink and 15 millimeters PWM controlled fan that you can use with external GPIO to control and set the speeds. Additionally, you'll find some thermal pads to apply to your Raspberry Pi. And here comes the first change. Unlike the original design of the cooling tower, which would attach to the CPU only, this ultra thin version of the cooling tower covers a couple of different ICs, including CPU. CRAM, the IC responsible for the Ethernet and the IC responsible for the USB as well. So you're actually extracting heat from all of these components. Now, will that affect the cooling performance? Well, that's probably the next thing I'm going to find out. But first, the installation. Oh, well, they've changed a couple of things as well because now the inserts are attached to the frame of the heatsink and the installation is so much easier because you just need four screws and this thing is on straight away. Now in terms of obstruction you will be sacrificing some space so yes you won't be able to use any Raspberry Pi hats however if you do extend the GPIO and uh, do extend the PoE if you're uh, interested in having access to that then yeah in theory you could run a Raspberry Pi hat on kind of like standoffs I guess. The only thing that is a little bit obscured is the connector for the camera. So if you're planning on using a camera, this is not the ideal cooling solution for you because that port is underneath it. Another change from the original design is, well, they removed the LEDs so you no longer can mod them. I did a small modding in this video in which I set the color of the LEDs based on the temperature, so go check it out if you're interested. But the new design doesn't have any LEDs, it only allows you to PWM control the speed of the fan. Now speaking of that, you can either pick the default Raspberry Pi utility in Raspi config, you'll be able to use GPL14 to control your fan. Now on top of that, 52Pi provides a simple Python script you can deploy yourself should you need that pen for something else you would like to remap the controls or add more granular controls over the fan. Now, since we're talking about the fan spinning, I have to say that even at 100%, it's relatively quiet. I guess I ran out of features to talk about this, so let's focus on cooling because this is what you're interested in. So, uh, I was running my benchmarks at quite high ambient temperature of 24 degrees of Celsius. Now, that's, that's hot, but uh, I also run the default Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig of RAM version in idle and in my benchmark. So at idle I had the temperatures of 52 degrees, which is... it's warm. Now, if you crank these things up and increase the CPU uh, load to 100% during 20 minutes a benchmark, that temperature skyrockets to 82 degrees and this is where it's thermally throttle. So not ideal. Obviously you're gonna need some sort of cooling solution. Now just going back to the original design and give you kind of the a background when I was using the original ice tower in the same temperature then it would run at 32 degrees at idle which is really really cool. It's 20 degrees coo uh, cooler than you know running it without a heatsink 
And once I started my 20 minute benchmark, the temperature raised, raised around 45 degrees, which isn't that high to be honest, which is just testament how good uh, the ice cooling tower is as a thermal solution for your Raspberry Pi. I know it looks ridiculous, but come on, it's cool. So when I initially looked at the design of this heatsink, I thought that actually there might be a benefit of having the fan pushing the air down and cooling all the components quicker rather than waiting for the heat to rise and heat the blades of the previous design. However, there was one more factor I didn't consider. It's the fact that this heatsink is trying to cool everything, including CPU, obviously memory, and the USB and Ethernet ICs. So there is a more heat heating that heatsink as well, and bear that in mind when actually investigating the results from my last benchmark. Now, at idle, it would run again at around 32 degrees, which is excellent. You will be able to have a light load and your Raspberry Pi will be just, well, chilling. But if you crank up the benchmark and start running CPU load at 100% for 20 minutes, as I did in my tests, then the temperature rises to 52, 53 degrees, which is still very acceptable. However, it's higher than original design. And I think this is caused by the fact that it's trying to dissipate more heat from different sources than on original design, which is only connected to the uh, heatsink on or heat plate on the CPU. So overall, it is a really interesting solution, but you might have one more question. Where do you find a compatible case for that monstrosity? Well, a couple of uh, weeks ago I actually covered two cases from 52 pi as well and I'm going to link them in this video, which would accommodate both because the original case comes with the well, slightly modified design of ice uh, cooling tower which allows you to control the LEDs just in line with my mode, uh, but nothing stops you with actually connecting the flat profile if you want to change the way it looks. So if you're looking for a case, well, that looks like a small PC, check this video out and that might be just what you need. That's pretty much all I've got for you now. If you're interested in what's next, well, I do not have a posting schedule, so you know how it works, I'm not going to explain all of that. A couple of social media links down below, just in case you want to get in touch and start conversation going. And if you have, if you have a case that would possibly match this cooling solution, do let me know and I'll be happy to check it out. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.